Hey guys, before we start today's episode of Super Beer Bros, just a quick little announcement. For those of you who don't know, we just started a new thing called Game Wisp. It's like a Patreon, but it's designed more for Beer Bros to give you guys products. Exclusive Let's Plays, behind the scenes stuff, a Discord server, AMAs, all the good stuff. In the $40 tier, you get a t-shirt. One t-shirt a month equals 12 t-shirts a year. Well, today is the last day to sign up for that tier, so this is just a reminder to let you know that the t-shirt's gotta go. Head on over to GameWisp.com slash Bros today to sign up. Thank you guys so much. See you around. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Super Dating Bros, Asago Academy. I'm Gerard. That's Alex. He's trying to date me. That was, I don't know if that was a news horn, like a this just in, or you're just doing that. This just in, I'm going to have sex with Gerard. He hopes. We stepped in the classroom avoiding Mimi's eyes as we did, but. Hunter. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Hunter, are you okay? It was going to be a long day. What? What? <laughs> oh my god. Hana, my sweet. I'm so happy to finally be spending our 20th anniversary together. Dude, you look pretty good for your age. Yeah, dude. I'm still collecting that shit. <laughs> Gerard, I can't believe you brought us back to the place we met. It only made sense. After all, we had to complete the circle. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but still... 25 years? How did it come to that? <laughs> you don't look a day older, dear. And it's a good thing, too. Gerard grabbed my waist and pulled me into his lap, giggling all the while. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard, not here! Why not? Someone could see! Oh, yeah. Sup to Youngtown. And why would that be a problem? Sup to Youngtown! Hashtag sub Youngtown, to Youngtown. Youngtown, Youngtown. Get Yo. this guy subs. Get in there. Subs. Chris, do it again. Subway. I want to see Youngtown everywhere. Subway. I want to Subway. put a picture of, of Subway. Hold on. Put a picture of, of Youngtown. Put a picture of Subway. Put a picture of Sub to Youngtown. <laughs> They're all the same <laughs> They're thing. They're all the same thing. They're all the same thing, you Go guys. Go Sub to Youngtown. Go Sub to Youngtown while eating a sub. Be your bro's homework. Go. Dude. Holy shit, what happened? Who's trying to kill us? Yo, it's a shit. Yeah. yeah. I have I'm a candelabra. I'm not afraid to use it. My sprang from her bed and in the middle of the night, in, in the middle of the room, wielding some kind of flaunting figure. Sorry, Mai. It was just... I just had a weird dream. I almost really? thought I wasn't <sighs> sucked to Youngtown. Really? <laughs> <laughs> she relaxed and immediately hit the figure behind her back. What's that? Uh, uh nothing. My. Oh, would you look at that? Mai pointed to the wall above my desk on which there was only a calendar and tried to toss the figure into her bed. Instead, it clattered against the bedside and fell to the floor. Uh... What? Mai? Is this my Chibiupa figure? I glanced at the corner of my desk and sure enough, Chibiupa was missing. I... I guess it is. Fancy that. <laughs> Why do you have it? Well, you know, just, uh... Happened to be in my bed for some reason. It just happened into your bed? Uh. All right. I wanted to look at it. Gerard so into his IBKs and you were talking, taking an interest in them. And so I just, I was just curious. Oh, why didn't you say so? I would have let you look at it any time. Though it was sitting on my desk all semester. It wouldn't have been hard for her to just look, get a look by looking at it. I made such a big deal about how weird it all was. I felt stupid trying to ask for them. Anyways, now you can have it back, and we're not under attack. I'm going to bed. Good night. Mai climbed hastily into her bed, no doubt embarrassed I discovered her secret. With a smile, I set Chibiupa back on my desk and snuggled into my blankets. Hmm. Front door. Air conditioning. Oh, what? I sighed. Looked like we were both going to bed embarrassed. I'm just really cold. Just turn the air off. Oh, you're no. saying turn the air off. Oh, Kelly. Kelly, just go to the knob and turn it all the way to off. I'm just cold. All right. It's okay, you guys. Let's, let's. I just, I'm cold. No idea what I was like, is someone say. here? Uh, sorry. I just, I, I'm, I'm cold. That's all. Got it. Okay. I, I got cold, you guys. And let's get back on track. It's the middle of the night. <laughs> it's the middle of the night. My roommate's playing with my toys. It's weird. Yeah. My leg felt much better the next morning, which was a good thing because all morning I was paranoid I would see Gerard. I spent the walk to class ducking behind corners and jumping behind strangers. After the dream that I had, I didn't know how I could face him. I watched the clock tick away the hours with increasing anxiety. Every time I looked up and saw it was a new hour, my throat tightened. But of course, the time for my doom came. Lunch. 
Don't even worry about it. You'll be fine. Mai patted me on the back in her way, but I shook my head. As soon as we entered the cafeteria, I searched the normal boots table for Gerard. But he wasn't there. I glanced at the lunch line out the door behind us. The spaces in between. Nothing. Where is he? <coughs> Mai shrugged. You got what you wished for. I bit the inside of my lip and headed into the lunch line. As was usually the case, Asagao served a mixture of foods from all across the world. With so many international students attending, it only made sense for them to do something like that. With our French and Thai food on our plates, we headed for the table. When we sat, I again searched the cafeteria. Nothing. <laughs> Looking for something? I jumped. Satch, sitting next to me, was grinning devilishly at me. <laughs> no, of course not. Satch laughed and jerked a thumb behind him. Gerard was at a table in the back of the room, a more private table surrounded by plants. He had an array of IBK figures in front of him and was taking money from one of the students he was talking to. The student pocketed the Max Skellington figurine, and Gerard shook his hand. Skelling pun. Max Skelling pun figurine. And Gerard shook his hand. He's selling his figurines? Only his extras. Really? Why? They're so important to him. I thought he kept all his extras. Sat shrugged. That? I don't know. Maybe he got tired of the clutter? Gerard was now trying to pitch a kitty with lightning yellow hair and a giant ass sword to a scared looking first year. <laughs> I turned back to my plate, trying to ignore my disappointment. After all, I didn't want to see him today. It was far too embarrassing. Nope, not at all. Lunch period passed by much more slowly without Gerard. It wasn't that the conversation didn't interest me, it was just that the spark of the whole thing was gone. Without Gerard's cheeriness and inclusive tendencies, the conversations veered towards games I had never seen or heard of. I pushed around my food, bored out of my mind. Finally, it was time to head back to class. With a grateful sigh, I got out of my seat and headed for the trash bin. Hana! Hana! Gerard, hi! Fancy seeing you here! In the cafeteria, at lunch. Yeah, I'm glad I caught you. Since I didn't get to eat with you today, I wanted to know if you'd be interested in making up for this weekend? Have lunch with you this weekend? Gerard was blushing slightly, a small smile on his lips. Was this a date? This was a date. Gerard was asking me on a date. <laughs> you up for it? Yeah. With you? Definitely. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. In that case, I'll see you around noon on Saturday. Right. Can't wait. As I beamed like a buffoon, I made eye contact, eye contact with Mai. She slowly shook her head at me. Called it. Totally called it. Oh, shush. Real date with Gerard? I was more than ready for that. Saturday morning took its slow, slow time coming, but when it finally did, I was ready. Mai was by my side, the one-woman equivalent of a team of stylists. She did my makeup for me, made sure my hair was extra silky, dabbed just the right amount of perfume on my neck, and of course, she helped me pick out the cutest outfit and the one I felt the most comfortable in. When I was all ready, it was just a matter of waiting. My baby Hana's growing all up. I'm so proud of you, honey. She pinched my cheek and I swatted her hand away. Stop that. Oh, this is my favorite Hana outfit anyway. <laughs> it was only a few weeks ago we talked about dating boys and you acted like it was an impossibility. Now look at you where we are. <laughs> Hana's got herself a B-O-Y-F. Stop it, stop it, I do not. My cell phone vibrated on my desk and I snatched it up immediately. As I expected, it was from Gerard. Was he waiting outside? Heart pounding, I opened it up. Hana, I can't make it today. I'm really, really sorry. I'll definitely find a way to make it up to you. Oof. Oh. Is it him? I showed her the message and her face fell as quickly as mine had. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? Couldn't he have told you sooner than this? We wouldn't have wasted all that time. Mai caught the look on my face and stuttered, backtracking. Uh... I mean, uh... <sighs> I'm sure he wants a rain check. It's not like Gerard to do something like this. Uh, yeah, it's not. He must really have not wanted to go with me. That's not what I meant, Hana. An odd, rather rhythmic knock tapped itself out against the door. Mai shot me a look. Well, if that's not Gerard, who is it? With a shrug, I went to get the door, trying not to let the hope show on my face. Maybe it was a prank, or he changed his mind, or... Or it was just Satch. Hi, Satch. <laughs> hey, don't look so happy to see me, please. 
But I think I know why you're bummed. Gerard sent you his message, didn't he? What? How did... Hmm. Gerard sends me to give you his most formal and sincere apologies. <laughs> but seriously, he's really sorry. He wanted the message delivered in person, but I guess he got paranoid. The weight would get your hopes too high. Uh... But why can't he come? Well... Well, that I don't know. Gerard's been acting strange lately. I know him a lot, almost better than anyone, and he's definitely going through something, but he's not the type of person to want to unload on the others. Um, so I'm keeping my distance. Out of respect. If he wants my help, he'll ask for it. Gerard is that kind of person. Thanks for the warning. Satch chuckled, patting me gently on the head. <laughs> I knew you were a smarty. Anyway, I'll be going. You look really nice today, by the way. Uh, thank you. Be good. Later. Satch waltzed down the hall, all smiles and good cheer. It made complete sense why Gerard and him were such good friends. I headed back into the dorm room. Maya had her purse on her shoulder and was looking at me expectantly. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. You ready to go? Go where? <laughs> Out to eat, silly. It's my treat today. There's a great chili place just off campus. Thanks, Mai. <laughs> what are you thanking me for? I'm just hungry. Come on. I'll starve to death the way you're dawdling. Once again, I found myself thinking, I was so, so lucky to have my. I was both dreading and anticipating running into Gerard after that. Dreading because I didn't want to see him try and avoid me or turn away in shame, and then I would know he made a mistake. But anticipating because there was only one thing I wanted now. Explanation. But after that day, Gerard stopped coming to the cafeteria for lunch. Nobody knew why, but nobody was particularly concerned. There's his face. Get in there, Chris. <laughs> Don't forget, Chris. There's his face. Don't you forget. Sometimes Gerald gets an idea to do something and he doesn't stop until it's done. How do you think he became such a legendary completionist? It was fine for them, but I wasn't satisfied. Not at all. It was that, dis that, was that dissatisfaction that led me standing in front of Gerard's door, hands twisted into my skirt. I'm I'm just checking on him, just to be sure. I raised the trembling hand to the door and knocked. Now, Alex, right now I want you to save. Because, depending on your next... Don't save there. Save somewhere else. It's like a two. There you go. Right now, depending on how you handle this scene, you could end the game very early. <sighs> be as calm and cool as you can be. All right. In the past, every time I knocked on Gerard's door, it flew open within seconds, Gerard's smiling face behind it. This time, it didn't open. Gerard? I knocked again. Was he really not there? Where else would he be? But this time I heard a rustling behind his door. Hana! Hana, is that you? Yeah. What's up? What's up? Are you okay? Um, can I come in? The latch turned and the door slowly creaked open about an inch and a half. Gerard peeked through the crack, apparently trying to block as much of the room inside as he possibly could. Uh, uh, I would love for you to, Hana, but I'm... Really, I would, I, I, but I'm busy. Busy? Is that why you haven't been around lately? I've been... worried about you. Um... Yes? He glanced into his room, then pulled the door a bit closer to him. I've just got this, uh... This huge school project due soon. Like, so huge, like, you don't even know how huge. It's like crazy, man. I nodded slowly. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you get it. Like, so big. I'm, I'm like, oh man, this is just so big. It's like crazy big. Jeez, so much, you know? So, um, I really can't afford to take time away from it. He glanced into his room again, pulling the door even closer to him. At this point, I could just barely make out his eye. He was clearly lying, but even so, he genuinely didn't seem to want me there. I thought of Satch's roundabout warning. Maybe this was what he was talking about? Demand an answer or let it go. The thing is, that this game has taught me that literally, even though I think I know what choice I'm supposed to choose, there's no way of me knowing, like, whether or not the way that I want it to go is going to be the way that I want it to go. Ke I <coughs> Kelly, I have a question for you, because you just joined us, and you're off camera. Hello? 
what do, what do you think is happening from a girl's perspective? From a woman's perspective, what do you think is happening? I well, I don't, know, I don't know. If, I don't know if I should just say because I don't want to influence Alex's final choice. Well, I think this is a team effort at this point we're, since we're, you're here. We're, we're we're working on it. I'm the kind of person that would be like, what the what the hell are you doing? Open sure. this door and talk to me. Sure. Why are you acting like this? Now, that's, that's what I would do. So let me ask you this: Why do you think I'm acting this way? Um, because there's something that you're not actually there's something else that is not related to what you just said that you're not talking about. Sure. I think I rocked your world. Okay. I think I rocked your world when I was like, why the fuck do you collect cats? Sure. And I think you're slowly selling off your collection because you're trying to make, get money or something and m do something worthwhile with your time. I think that's what you're doing right now. You are half there. That's what I think's happening right now. Sure. I think you're going through like a crisis of like, why do I complete stuff? Sure. Okay. But I don't know what answer to pick because either one of these could set it up. I, I, it's just, it's, it's totally random. I have no idea. I could go in there and you could be hurt or I could go in there and stop you from selling your cats. Well, here's the thing. In the time that you spent with me in real life and in the game, because yes. it's very close to me. Sure. Uh, have I ever been deceptive to you guys? Ever like try to hide anything? Not really. Right. Maybe like little things just like for so like, you for know, surprise reasons or like, sure. just like, or just like to take, to protect someone else's reputation or Sh sure, sure. But never like, never like you, where's what's Gerard up to. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So in this case, knowing me and knowing where my reputation, I'm, I'm just having fun with this question, knowing me and my reputation with you guys, what me personally, what would you pick if it was actually me? If I was standing in this hallway and I wanted to talk to you right now, I would go into there. I would go into that room and talk to you because there's something wrong if you're doing if you're acting this way. Sure, but also, I'm a girl who's new to the school. Yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get that sweet sweet tang. <laughs> and I don't know if if you need a moment to like, to like, handle this shit. I don't sure. know. Can I play devil's advocate here? Yes. I played this game and I played PBG's route. And every time that I told him that I really wanted to talk to him, that was a bad decision. And I got the bad ending. Sure. Because it turns out that he just wanted to be left alone. Sure. So, so even though I thought that, like, of course, you should talk about your problems. Sure. It didn't turn out to be the best answer. So that's. But see, that's what that's I'm saying. A like, coin but, to, but to go to that, to add to that, this entire time out, this entire playthrough. Has my character been open and honest? Yeah, 100 percent. So, in the times that Hannah's questioned Gerard, what has she done? What has he done? He's always been open and honest. Yeah, exactly. So, in this moment where he's being closed off, he's being secretive, he's not sharing something, would you let him be or demand an answer? Because in this moment, he's never given you a reason to, tr to, to, dis to, to distrust him. Right. So this goes back to the 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 root of trust. Do you trust Gerard? Or do you not trust? Well, Gerard? that's what I'm saying. I, I don't. I, I know that he's doing this either because he doesn't want me to know that he's doing it. He doesn't want. He doesn't want to know. He doesn't want me to know that I affected him so much, and and that he's in a crisis mode. I don't know if you're in a crisis mode. You know what I mean? Like you know if you're in a crisis mode, but I don't. Sure. I don't know. But I, I, I think the game wants me to leave you alone. That's what I think. I think the game wants me to leave you alone. What do you want to do? You want to demand an answer? If it was, what I'm saying is, if it was Alex standing in the hallway, I would demand an answer. Sure. That's the nature. So of, the question is, that's the nature. That's the nature of Alex and Gerard's relationship. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. But the the nature of Gerard and Hannah's relationship, it's different. Okay. So what are you gonna pick? You let it go. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Fuck it, beer bros. Well. well, okay. I'll let you get back to it then. You're the best. Really? Sweet. Thank you, Hana. I knew you'd understand. You're the best. I smiled half-heartedly. See you later. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. See you around. That's what he said, but I did not see him around. Weeks rolled by, and suddenly the tournament was just a week away. I practiced my butt off and was ready for it, but even then my mind kept straying to Gerard. What was he doing, and why was he avoiding me? 
Chapter four, Angry Gerard. Do we want to? Do we want to jump into it? Yeah, we're still good. We got time. I just don't know what else to do. I collapsed the huff on my bed, wrapping myself up in its sheets. I don't know either, Hana. I hadn't spoken to Gerard in weeks, and neither I nor anybody else knew what he was up to. After class, he went straight to lunch, politely evading all conversation on the way. He grabbed his food and disappeared into his room, not being seen until seconds before class started up again. No one but me was even particularly concerned. That's just the way he is. Eh. He'll come <laughs> back when he's ready. Eh. <laughs> That's that's the way I think have the internet you, thinks have of John. Have you ever seen a John Trump video? I, of course I have. <laughs> I've helped make many of them. I know very much about. Eh. <laughs> I don't know why. Fucking got I think, him. I don't know why. Fucking I think got that John Tron impression is so shitty. It's so. That's funny. That's the point. It's so. I'm fun. doing it bad on purpose. I know you are, but it's just I I don't know why that gets me so. <laughs> but that wasn't it. That wasn't the whole story. Of course, I was concerned for his well-being. Knowing Gerard, he would push himself to the ends of the earth if it meant completing some project he was working on. But at the same time, he hates me, doesn't he? Mai sat across from me, straddling her desk chair. What a jerk. If he really decided to just get up and start hating you for no reason, then he's probably not the guy you thought he was, right? What a jerk. But I'm sure he is. He's not the kind of person to shut people out like that. So either I did something wrong or something is wrong with him. Mai, what do I do? Are you seriously asking me that question? Sure, I mean, I don't exactly have any other leads to go off, and you know way more about guys than I do. <laughs> well, you really like Gerard, right? Gerard, right? Of course I do. <clears throat> Even if he was doing this because you you upset him in some way? And if he is, he's being totally unreasonable. Then you'd want to try and fix the situation? Of course. If I did something wrong, I should rectify it. My groaned, rubbing her temples. Your thought isn't wrong, but the way you're applying it is. Well, if that's what you want to do, why don't you just try doing something to show him how much you care? You always talk about how Gerard's been doing all this stuff for you, so maybe you should, if you did something for him, he'll understand. It's possible he felt like you were taking advantage of his kindness. Do you think? That couldn't really be true. There was no way. Gerard was excruciatingly kind to me, so it kind of made me uncomfortable at times, but I never asked him to be that way. I always tried to let him know I appreciated it, and I was even trying to get Princess Pumpernickel for him. Alex, click the notebook real quick. <sighs> okay. What the fuck? How do I get out of this? Yeah. Unsuccessfully. What did it matter that I was trying to get the figure if there were no actual results? It wasn't the trying that mattered. If I could only find a way to get Princess Pumpernickel for him, he'd definitely understand how I feel. Do you think? But you've already tried, haven't you? Gerard has half the country locked down. Uh, if he can't do it, how are you going to? I don't know. But I have to try. I have to do something to show Gerard how I truly feel about him. If, after all of that, he still wants nothing to do with me and he still wants to avoid me, then there's nothing I can do. The question was, how was I going to do it? On my way out of the cafeteria the next day, I was tapped on the shoulder. Hi. Jimmy, what's up? Is everything okay? Jimmy shifted his weight almost as if he were dancing. After a second, he returned my gaze. Yeah, everything's fine. Well, Lee wants to talk to you when you have a second. Do you have a time to meet up with him today? Well... Class is about to start. Yeah, but it's really important. Okay, okay, if it's really important, then sure. He's waiting for you in front of the club room. Okay. I hesitated. Something about this didn't feel right. Are you sure? You're gonna run out of time. Right, sorry. Following Jimmy's advice, I went straight to Poppy Hall, a question swirling in my mind. Jimmy seemed like he was something more than just sad. What was going on that he felt so bad? I turned into Poppy and down the hall... I turned into Poppy and down the hallway that led to both the normal boots and the hidden block club rooms. Waleed was waiting for me in front of the hidden block room, one arm hidden behind his back. Waleed, what's up? Nintendo 101. Hana! Hana, you came! I'm so glad. I was worried you wouldn't show. Um. Okay. But what's going on? Jimmy said you had something really important to talk with me about. Oh, right. Well, it is really important. It's this. <gasps> Waleed slid his arm out from behind his back. I gasped. In his hand was a crimp. Crimp. A crisp. Mint condition IBK box. And inside the box... <laughs> Princess Pumpernickel? 
She was a beautiful chocolate brown kitty. Long curls of amethyst hair cascaded down her head. A small silver crown with what looked like actual garnets encrusted in it. She smiled an almost Cheshire grin as if she knew exactly how much she was worth. How did you... Um, There's no time. I know you've been waiting to, wanting to help Gerard find this and here it is. You've been worried about Gerard, haven't you? <laughs> Walid, did you get me this just so I could help cheer Gerard up? You're so sweet. Walid shook his head roughly, his jaw clenching. Hmm. I want you to drop out of the tournament. What? You what? I will give this to you if you drop out of the tournament. Walid's gaze dropped to the floor, no longer able to maintain eye contact with me. Suddenly, Jimmy's suspicious behavior clicked into place. <laughs> You're blackmailing me? Look, Gerard's probably never going to see this figure unless you give it to him. If you don't take it back, I'm selling it for a profit. I didn't have to buy this stupid thing. Questions of how Waleed manages to afford it rose on my lips then died like a flame. His family could probably afford anything. He didn't even get phased when he lost $50 by tweeting out a Nintendo promo code to the internet. That's referenced in this game, by the way. Great. This is mutually beneficial arrangement. You get what I want, I get what I want. Uh, you get what you want, I get what I want. And everyone's happy in the end, but you have to drop out. <sighs> if I quit the tournament, I would lose the chance to join the Normal Boots Club. Even more than that, I would probably sentence them to a failure. Shane would be right about me. I wasn't sure they would ever forgive me either. But at the same time, this figure was priceless to Gerard. It would make him so happy. And it was probably the only way I could truly show him how I felt. Even if only once, even if at the cost of joining the club, I wanted to see Gerard smile like that. Deal. Damn, I don't even get to choose? Really? Are you sure? I'm sure. Then let's shake on it. Waleed extended a hand to me. A handshake. A sign of friendship. Respect. Greeting. Admiration. Admiration, even. Truce. I took his hand in mine and gave him a firm shake. All right. Here you go. Be very careful to dent the box. You'll destroy its worth. I will. Thanks. No, Hana. Thank you. While he disappeared down the hallway, a skip in his step, I gazed at the box in my hands. It was made of cardboard and plastic. The figure inside grinned knowingly at me, taunting me. A figure made of plastic and paint, and apparently real garnets. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. Still, I could give it to Gerard now. It was just a matter of finding him. You want to call it here? Keep going a little bit more. I want to, I want to cliff, cliffhang everyone as we get to it. I ran, so up, close. I ran up to my locker as quickly as I could. The box's weight carefully distributed between my fingers. I opened my locker and flung several books from the top shelf then set the box carefully in their place. Very gently, I shut the door and dashed into class. You. Miss oh Mizunu. I winced as I stepped into the room. Um, Miss Shizuka. Might I have an explanation for your lateness? My eyes darted to PBG, Shane, John. They gazed at me innocently, completely unaware of how I betrayed them. How in the world was I going to tell them I was quitting the tournament? Uh, Miss Mizunu. Uh, I don't. I'm sorry. Of course you don't. People never seem to care these days. She snapped her fingers and pointed to my desk. Sit. Scrambled into my chair, trembling slightly. Ma leaned over my shoulder and giggled. <laughs> way to go. I sense a rant coming on. There is no way I'm getting the good ending. <laughs> it's not my fault. Men. Men. No, people. People these days don't know how to respect each other's time. You make an agreement to meet in a place, and what they do, they make you 20 minutes, they make you wait 20 minutes, no phone call, not even a measly text. As if I don't have better things I could be doing than waiting around for you. Do you think this time, uh, that time comes cheap in this reality? Of course it doesn't. Every second you spend is a second you'll never get back. Look at me. This is like the flowey character of <laughs> Asuka Academy. She slammed her hands on their desk. Look at me. Look at me. We want to claw. Heed this. Respect the woman's time. She has very little of it. Miss Shizuka fingered the chalk in her hands. All at once, it snapped in two. She cleared her throat and straightened up. Hmm. Now then, class, about regenerative shields. <laughs> She's crazy. Don't say that. She, oh, Don't sorry. say that. She's having a hard time. 
Do you even know how old she is? Isn't she 25? <laughs> that's what she think that's what she'd like you to think. Must be hard when you feel like you're getting older. Mishizuka shot a glare at our direction, and we silenced. There was only one thing left for me to do, and I spent the entire rest of class dreading it. No matter how I tried to spin it in my mind, this was a conversation that wouldn't have a positive end. There was no way to make it not hurt. I wanted to find a way to at least make it hurt less, but what in the world was I supposed to do? Instead, an impending sense of dread settled over me. The class's lights were too bright, the room too stuffy. Everyone seemed happy and carefree like they were somewhere else, or they were from a different planet. I nibbled the eraser of my pencil until it disappeared, and then... It was time. Hey guys, can I talk to you about something? Chris, I didn't fucking forget. I didn't forget, Chris. If I was Hana right now, here's what I, here's what I think is happening. I think that Gerard is going to come to me and I'm going to be like, I have to tell you something. And he's going to be like, I have to tell you something. And then I'm going to be like, I got a princess pumpernickel. And he's going to be like, I have a princess pumpernickel. And then I'm going to be like, this was all for nothing. You're very wrong. <laughs> You're so wrong. Why don't we go ahead and save and call it here? All right. Do a seven. There we go. Audi. All right, guys. We're going to get it. We're so close. We're probably like two episodes out. Oh, my God. Are you excited, Alex? I'm mortified. Are I, you cliffhanging, bro? The thing is, I don't... There's no... There's no... Like, it seems like when you're making a choice that you should be able to, like, know based on what the choice is, like, how it's going to affect the story of the game. Sure. But I, it just doesn't happen. I I, I don't know. I, I, I don't feel con confident. Sure. Understandable. I mean, I, I mean, I know the point of this game is to, like, go back and play through it a bunch of times, but I'm trying to get it in one, and it's, like, I impossible. Think, I think you're doing great. I'm trying my best. I think you're doing great. I think at this point, the way you've been going, there might be a couple opportunities to make it in the end. I'm trying but, my best. Uh, I think right now, on a scale of one to five, five being the worst ending and one being the best ending, you're probably at a two. That's not awful. It's not awful. That's not awful. I feel bad about the choices that I've made. It's I okay. Never, I would never make them. It's okay. Uh, if we do get the second, if we do get the good ending... Uh, in the bonus episode, we'll have you replay the game again to see what could happen. To see what could happen, because you can skip all the way to the chapters, all the decisions. Yeah, so we're gonna replay the whole game in like a matter of maybe 15, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and you can get the ending that you want. So right. we'll see how well you do if you don't get the best ending. But let's see if you can get it. I still believe in you. I'm trying my best. All right, man. Later, man. Later, man.